writing a ghost note can be spooky. Hey, I am Chuck the Bureaucrat, and a while back I showed you how to write a ghost note for a general officer. In that video, I focused on the content of the note, and really the point was that you have to write in the voice of the person who will ultimately be sending the note. I mean, if you're a major writing a ghost note for a, for a two-star to send to a one-star, you have to strike a tone of someone who is talking to a, a subordinate that they're friendly with. It can be a little weird, and it takes some practice. Another point I make in that video is that there are really two ways that you can provide the ghost note to the person who's ultimately going to send it. You can embed the text of the ghost note in an email that you send to your boss, or you can create an Outlook message that they simply have to send. Really, the choice depends on the preferences of your boss. I've used both, and between you and me, I prefer just sending the text. You'll see why in a second. But in certain circumstances, using saved Outlook messages can be really handy. So let me show you how to do it, and then we'll talk about the pros and the cons. First things first, you just open up your Microsoft Outlook and you open a new email. Then you type in the text of the ghost email. And here I'm just using the text from our previous video. Now, what you do is you select File and Save As. Here, you see that the file type is Outlook Message Format Unicode, and the file name automatically populates with the subject of the ghost note. Okay, I'm going to save that to my desktop and then close the draft email. Now, when I go to my desktop, I can see that I've got this Outlook message, and if I double-click on it, it opens back up. Okay. So what are the pros and cons of this technique, and why am I so skittish about using it? Well, on the positive side, this is a great tool if you have a repetitive email that you have to send over and over again. Years and years ago, I had to send emails to people who had been assigned as investigating officers. There was this long boilerplate email that I had to send to them, so I just saved it as an Outlook message, and every time I got a new investigating officer that needed the email, I just popped it open and sent it to him. The downside of this method is that it is really easy to just hit send. And as long as you're dealing with routine, run-of-the-mill messages, that's not really a problem. But there's two additional things that you can do that really raise the stakes. First, you can add and save recipients. So if you're writing a ghost email for one general to send to another, you can put the email address of the intended recipient into this saved document. And second, you can attach a ghost email to another email. Here I've attached my ghost note about Project Calliope to an email so that I can send it to General McNulty. So you can set this up so that your general gets this ghost note as an attachment, and all they have to do is open it and click send. You see why I'm nervous about these things? At one point, I was working for a GEO who was going to send out a large volume of customized emails to commands. We had gone over the language and the data. One of my action officers, frankly one of the best ones I ever worked with, he'd put all of these together, something like 28 of these ghost notes. We sent them up to my boss, who was like, open send, open send, open send. And then we realized there was a mistake. It wasn't my worst day, but frankly, I'd rather not relive it. So listen, I made this video because somebody asked for it. I really do want you to be as successful as possible. So if you have a question, shoot me a note through LinkedIn, or you can leave a comment in a video. And now, if you want to see another video that I did because somebody asked a specific question, Watch this video.